if you're a bubblegum fan or a baked beans fan, weird transition there, but but it makes sense when you drink this. Welcome back everyone, it's Dan and Eddie, the Deathless Dogs, and we've got a blind on our hands here today with three limited releases from Maker's Mark this year. You've got your Maker's 46 Cask Strength, your Maker's FAE-01 from the Wood Finishing Series, and the second entry in the Wood Finishing Series this year, appropriately named FAE-02. Brilliant. Yeah, they really uh, went out on a limb there. <laughs> These are three bottles that we've had just about the same amount out of. Deadlocked. So these are all coming from very similar places in their life. We are looking for the best of the best this year. Yeah, whereas last year, I think we went heavy in the bookers. This year was kind of a maker's year for us. And I'm happy about that because I do like maker's mark stuff. So it was cool to get all of these limited releases this year. The only one we don't have, which isn't even really limited, is the regular just Maker's Mark cask strength. These are all going to be coming in at just about the same proof point. So nothing should jump out that way to tell us which is which. And honestly, I don't have any bias going into this anyway. I'm just kind of interested to see how it all shakes out, having drank and enjoyed all three of these this year. Hoping we can crown an undisputed champion and put the belt on The it. belt is on the table. I think I'm going to know what I'm going to know when I know it. Yeah, you always say that and then you never do. No, so, I feel like I have. No, if you remember the Booker's Blind, you put the one that you were dead set on being first last. What did you put in third? B. B was Granny's Badge. I went, what? B was Granny's Badge. No fucking way. All we gotta do now is start jumping in on the nose for A. It's a very like weeded bourbon, typical maker's nose that I'm getting with a little bit of that cinnamon poking through. Classic maker's mark through and through. Weirdly enough, like near the tail end, I'm talking the finish of the smell. Mm -hmm. You get a little like Vaseline type vibe or something weird. Yeah, I was actually gonna say that like i was thinking band-aids and i'm like no it's not band-aids like a scotch but it's something medical related but not medicine i think vaseline yeah it's or like some kind of ointment kind of like that stp vibe somewhere in the bathroom you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> i was trying to pin down what that was a very woody smell up front too though not necessarily like your typical oak smell either but just like wood removing the vaseline from the equation on the tail end makers always kind of gives me like a a faint bubblegum vibe and i think i'm kind of getting a little bit of that all right let's jump in on the taste Finish is long and strong on that one. Quite oaky. On the tip of my tongue, it's definitely cinnamon forward with actually some of that bubble gum that I got on the smell. All in all, very drinkable, very pleasant, especially at that 110-ish proof point. Yeah, the finish is weird. It takes a second. You swallow it and you're like, ah, oh, nothing. Then all of a sudden, the oak shows up dries out your tongue makes you want to go in for another drink mouthfeel is kind of dry it's a woody experience i feel like with makers you almost have to acclimate to it when you drink it i mean it's bourbon but it's very different from other bourbons yeah and i totally get why people say they don't like makers when they do because it's like yeah it is kind of a different experience even from other weeded bourbons i feel like makers is kind of out on their own island with the things they're doing and i think that's why they've been as successful as they are. I suppose we run to number two, or not two, number B. Number B is the shelf turd, sir. This is more buttery, <laughs> sweeter, more faint too. This yeah, very have faint. have as much of a kick. Very faint. A's nose was much more powerful. Toasted wood, even toasted bread. It smells dry. Like, yeah. more dry than A. A little bit less of that bubble gum I was talking about with A. That's why I'm saying toasted bread. Yeah, I could see, like, some grain elements. Some earthy harvest time Like a toasted, elements. toasted 12 grain bread. Not, like, white bread. Like, one of those breads that comes in a bag that has a bag inside the bag. The whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. This bread's going to keep you alive for, like, 90 years. Yeah, this is that Ezekiel bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bible bread for sure. The first one to me was more like a gum sweet thing. B is, B is for through. bread. Yeah. That is much sweeter than I thought wow. it would be. Much thicker than A was. Not as uh, 
abrasive that toasted bread thing a little bit but it's like you put honey on it or something a honey butter or something on the honey butter on the bread being that it's makers could it be like cinnamon honey butter there's a bit of fruitiness to this one actually too kind of banana i'm not hitting bananas i'm hit i'm actually hitting like a, a tinge of a dark berry it's almost it's i swear it's almost like a nice like hearty wheat toast with some butter and maybe just a touch of like a dark fruit jam on it or something it's a very honey butter and fruit jam i could be on board with that ah this is really good it is very good a little bit abrasive on the middle of your tongue certainly dry but not as much as a was i think a was way more abrasive yeah the finish isn't as oaky as a was i feel like it could be brown sugar forward in the finish like it is on the sweeter side it's a sweet finish it's like that bit of honey candy that old candy Oh, the weird, like, wax wrapper. It's like a honey Tootsie Roll almost or something. Did you like those? Yeah, I fuck with those. I feel like any time I got those in my trick-or-treat bag, I was like, mm, garbage direct. The nose loses to A easily. I think A's nose was much more present and accounted yeah. for, whereas B was very faint to where the flavor, like, surprised me when I yeah. drank it. No, I agree with that. Moving to C. This, on the other hand, might have the most pleasant smell. And I'm not 100% on this one, but this one could be roll that beautiful bean footage. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. It's more more of a brown sugary... A little bit of pork in the beans, you know what I'm saying? Almost a bit barbecue-y. Yeah. You know? um, We know what this one is, then. Potentially. Potentially. We've been wrong in the past. Really nice, though. Heavily brown sugar. I think... A, B, and C, I would definitely say C has the most pleasant nose, by far. Far and away the best nose. I think I could agree with you on that. Yeah, there's a little bit of like a tang in there. Barbecue saucy, almost. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree, and I'm totally ready to just beat this whiskey up right here, because like, the smell is driving me into want to drink it. I'm compelled to want to <laughs> drink this because of how good it smells. Mm-hmm. You know, very barbecue-ish, and I like yeah. that. Like, I love barbecue. You better come down here, get some of this shit. There's that bubblegum flavor I've been talking about. More prevalent than A. Yeah. That's tons of bubblegum. Where the bitterness is supposed to be, unlike B, where that abrasion is supposed to be on these other two, it's like bubblegum, kind of. I just got a whole mouthful of bubblegum. That's like all I tasted, really. Maybe even like a touch of chocolate. If it is chocolate you're getting, it's going to be like milk chocolate. The chocolate I'm getting is more specifically like hot chocolate. Kind of the middle ground. It's not milk and it's not dark. It's that like hot cocoa kind of thing. Yeah, I I get what you're saying. When you get towards the tail end of your mug of hot cocoa and it's got a little bit of that graininess to it. sludge. Yeah. That oak is very present in the finish, though. Going back to the nose... After drinking it, that Vaseline is showing up like it was in A. Really? A is actually a sweeter nose. Wow, A opened up to like, it's like caramel or marzipan. Just letting yeah. that sit for a while. That got real nice. The custardy, it, caramel. It had to open up a bit. And like I said, I feel like Makers is something you kind of have to acclimate to. We probably should have done a shot of 101 before we started this. And then we would have been like... <laughs> Good to go, but like, no, A has changed. A has opened up. I'm calling flan. You're going like a cooked, like, custard with caramel. I could see that. Some of the abrasions gone with letting this thing open up a bit, too. It's still there, though. I think it's still by far the most abrasive. B is still super faint on the nose. You know, like a golden mustard? Like, it's kind of got something weird like that going on. On the nose? Yeah. I mean, it's similar to how C had that tang, like how we were calling barbecue Is it a mustardish tang? It could be. That's funny, because so like, same tangy element showing up in B and C. Same like Vaseline-esque element showing up in A and C on the nose. By happenstance, the way we line these up, it's almost like B just is the middle ground between A and C. Yeah, it's weird. But I kind of agree with that statement. It's like reverse meal, right. in a way. It's like desserty all of a sudden now. Right. Then you got like the the mustard, like getting ready to go, and then here's your side with the beans. <laughs> yeah. You know? So that's we all have our our main course of mustard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, you put the mustard on the cheeseburger. Option B is like going to Starbucks on a Sunday morning after you're hungover. Never done that. I have. I'm a caribou man. You're welcome, Mike. So this would be like a mocha minus the whipped cream. C has the most, like, char flavor 
of the three. Yeah. I agree with I'm you. having a hard time ranking. Yeah. Like, when we first went through, I thought I had a clear last place, but Not going anymore. back through, it's like, no, this is a, this is tough. It's really close. Honestly, even my third place that I'm putting in third is not like a distant third from first even. This is like photo finish, you know? Yeah. Are we ready for the grand reveal? What did you put for last place? Last place, I put C. Last place, I picked A. So your last place, C, F-A-E-O-2. Wow. My last place was A, Makers 46. What did you put for your winner? My winner, I put B. I also chose B as my winner. We have a unanimous victory, FAE 01. <laughs> not did what, not see that coming. Not what we thought it was. No. It was not the beans. No. We got a belt, FAE 01. Your 2021 champion of the Makers releases. Did not expect that. that I'm a bit shocked. FAE 01 has opened up very nicely from the first It really has, yeah. It. The champion. The champion. Has been crowned. So there it is. The ranking of the 2021 Makers limited releases with kind of a shocking victory for us personally. Just thinking, you know, and drinking these on their own. I honestly thought FAE 02 was going to take it. Yeah, um, when I I, and even when I had the mouthfeel on B, I was kind of like, I think that's O2. Yeah. But like we said, not a wide margin. All of these great bottles. Did you buy any of these bottles or all three of them this year? Which one was your favorite? If you've got all three of these, I totally recommend doing this. Blinding yeah. them up, all three of them. And uh, checking it out, seeing which one comes through as your favorite. Let us know which one is your winner this year. If you haven't yet, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be here again next week doing some more whiskey drinking and whatever else we feel like doing. From the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Ooh, there's that sneeze I've been talking about all night.